I'm Coulter Wonkite. I'm already into the 420, damn it. Legacy 420 has medicinal and recreational products down to a science, literally. With two biochemists on staff and a chief scientific advisor, every product is tested in the Legacy 420 laboratory. Legacy 420, Ty and Denega. Open 9 to 9 every day. Visit Legacy420.com. So what are you doing? Nothing. Nothing? Why not? Trying to get on the Slice Style Radio website. Sounds like a cool website. Yeah, it's all right. You're listening to Lifestyle Radio. The opinions expressed during this show are those of the individual participants and do not necessarily reflect the opinions of their associated organizations or Lifestyle Radio. You know I blame it on. Education and politicians, no one's willing to step up and speak. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Pace Radio Show. My name is L. Graham, and we are coming to you live here at 420radio.ca. Tonight's scheduled joint host is Kim Cooper, but unfortunately, she has been hospitalized with pancreatitis. So, in her place, our producer and the host of the 420 Radio Show. Al Rapp will be sitting in her place and joining in on the conversation. Right, Al? Hi, how are you? I'm the other Al tonight. You're the other Al. (laughs) Al, Al, that's right. That's right. (laughs) So, uh, Al, um, do you know what pancreatitis is? No, I have no idea, and I hope I don't get it. Yeah. She she looked like she was in a lot of pain. So. She did. I saw that picture of her posted there. I wasn't sure either, so I looked it up. And it says here that a pancreatitis is a disease in which the pancreas becomes inflamed. And uh, damage happens when the digestive enzymes are activated before they're released into the small t- intestine and begin attacking the pancreas. Mm. And, and what, what, what are the uh, symptoms? What are the symptoms? Let's see what the symptoms are. I'm find, trying to find that link. <laughs> Sorry, I threw but a I can far, tell you the most common cause. <laughs> yeah, I can tell you the most common cause, though. The most, which is um, they say here the most common cause of acute pancreatitis is stones in the gallbladder. They say the gall, okay. the gall, yep, the gallstones pass through the common bile duct to enter the small intestine, and at the entry of the small intestine, the main Pantre- uh, pancreatic duct joints, but yeah, okay, all right. So yeah, it goes down <laughs> the wrong way, I guess, by the looks of it. Yeah, Symptoms. It, 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 it's it's not a nice one to have. That I do know. No, 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 no. It doesn't uh, it doesn't sound like it. There, there is um, a information here on what is it, what's it feel like, and all that. And yeah, I guess we don't um, need to go through that. We don't need to go through that. We can just see it in Kim's face in that picture. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, get well soon. Now, yeah, yeah, get well soon, Kim. There was something I read about uh, one way of uh, uh, helping cure it is um, painkillers and spending time in the hospital starving. So, from my under, uh, from my understanding, she's doing both, and she just sent me a, uh, a Facebook message letting me know it's it's uh, fucking hurts <laughs> and 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 you know what you you you've gone through similar things uh last year you were in the hospital for a little while yeah i was in the hospital uh just over a year ago where i was in there with a with a uh, partial bowel blockage and yeah it's very painful and uh yeah, she's probably, obviously listening <laughs> the, yeah probably very similar <laughs> symptoms yeah 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 Probably very, very, very painful because I know that uh, she had been having some issues and they had done some tests lately. And uh, one of her tests was on Monday, and this is when it was discovered. And uh, yeah, so she's going to spend a few days in the hospital. I don't I think, think she's got a. I don't think she's got a release date yet, but I'm sure she'll let me know here shortly if she does. Hotel hell. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it looked like she was really enjoying the food. Uh, had uh, yeah, broth and jello. <laughs> oh, yummy! Scrumptious. Yeah. 
Uh, okay, she's sending me messages. She says she Obviously. is tuning in. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> she said the scan, the CT scan die caused the flare up or caused the reaction to this. Oh. Oh. Ooh. I've had that. Well, at least, at least you've found somebody to blame already, Kim. <laughs> uh, well, we wish you well, Kim, and uh, you know you'll be out soon and uh, rearing up the airwaves uh, pretty soon. I can tell. Yeah, I'm sure she will be. She, we sure she will be. All right. Okay. What do you think? You bring in our guest? Sure. Sure. Okay. Okay. Well, at this time, I'd like to welcome our guest, who has been helping patients with education. To- as well as to access the medication, well, I don't know, ever since I have known him. Um, so at this time, I'd like to welcome Justin Lauses to the Pace Radio Show. Hello, Justin. How are you? Good. Hey, y'all. Hey, y'all. Hey. I'm, I'm doing good, man. Doing good? Doing good? Yeah. Life is busy? Busy. Like, so busy. And usually, like, mainly positive things, except for my health. Like, everything else is pretty positive. So, you know, it's nice. Yeah. 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 Good. That's good. Yeah. I see. Uh, uh, well, as far as health, we'll get we'll get into that. You know, medicinal right. uses and stuff like that as we go along through the show. Sure. Um, but uh, I was sort of want to talk to you right off the bat uh, about dispensaries and sure. the way uh, things seem to be. You know, things are coming down here uh, pretty hard on them. We're seeing raids uh, happening yeah. all the time. We're seeing. Places that are being, um, you know, basically, I guess, where they're being uh, confiscated or taken over, padlocked, security put into them. Uh, right. Lease takes over. They're just shutting them down. Just shutting them down. Yeah. They, they, Some cases. In Hamilton, they went after last week, they went after the Georgia Peach uh, chains. Right. They got four of them. Then they opened in Hess Village the next morning. And uh, today, this morning, I seen an article in the Hamilton Spectre that said, and now they've decided without any explanation that they're closing the new store. So something's up there. It's tricky. Yes. Yes. It's yeah. Like, you know, yeah. There's so many yeah. factors. And, and right now, it's a little different than yesteryear. Like, literally, like, like, before October 17th, everything changed with the Cannabis Act. So we yeah. can't we can't judge anyone now. Like if you wanna you wanna just sh- close up shop? No one's gonna judge you. Like we're trying to help people, but the government's not making it easy. Like, no, they're they're you know people are taking these threats, their new powers, and and the power of yeah. threatening. And and it it doesn't matter who owns the building. If you get busted right. for this, you get charged, and you get uh, found guilty, your building is gone, or the yeah. owner of the building is going to lose his building, and that right there is enough to shut most people down. Well, first is the first you'll get a significant um, fine. Yeah. So that is just enough, right? Like as soon as you get that interaction from the government to shut down, you have to imagine that's going to be enough for la- most landlords that aren't mm-hmm. invested personally most landlords and most of the the guys who are behind the business i mean uh, they are opening and closing weekly sometimes in different locations you know to to kind of keep doing this the last count was, and dodging yeah the last count yeah, yeah. In, in hamilton was 38 uh it's probably down closer to 20 now uh i wow. would suspect yeah there's a few more yeah. that are closing uh, end of the month, um, and but the Hamilton Village dispensary is the, is the one store that is under the injunction, and they won't be touched at least till April. Now, so. I, I, I'm not a lawyer, but I would have to imagine that. You know, some people operating under the same, like, sort of SOP, like standard operating procedures, yeah. operating as a strictly medicinal club, yes, should be able to do so, right? It's, you'd it's, think uh, so. You'd think so. Yeah. You'd want, you'd want, yeah, because, you know, here we are, 
three months into recreational cannabis and they've got 180, 200 stores across the country. Yeah, here we are as medical patients for 18 years. We're mm-hmm. still waiting for our first store. Well, look, John Conroy, he's launching a constitutional challenge. We're just looking for, he's looking for affidavits to get her to, to, to just make sure it's a really proper case to file it. And uh, we'll start, he's collecting those. But um, in the meantime, in his statement he released uh, that we were told to share and get out there, um, is, is, you know, just to say, look, we're filing this constitutional challenge and we feel that this is our right. And he lays out the points rather clearly. And uh, it's, it's, it's enough to make me feel motivated to continue the fight and um, continue providing dignified access to qualifying patients, right? Like I've never <laughs> sold, I've never what I call a sell, sold weed, right? Like that's cool and it's fun and, and whatever, but I've always just kind of worked in a very medicinal aspect, right? Mm-hmm. Just yeah. dealing with patients and that's, that's kind of what we do at Just Compassion. And that's kept us really out of harm's way. There's also some bylaw issues. Like we go back now and when I opened up that particular location, it was um, like, if you, if you find it hidden in the bylaw, I remember once upon a time before, before the, um, the, uh, the LPs were getting initially set up in 2014, 2015, they had mm-hmm. bylaw set up. So then they had now, if you find it, it's in the bylaw saying that you can only have a medical marijuana facility in uh, industrial zoning, right? So yeah. there's a few ways that you can skin the cat to help yourself, you know, stay alive a little longer. And it's it's due diligence. Like, we have to remember, this is medical cannabis, medical everything. Yeah. I mean, during Project Claudia, I remember my old dispensary got raided, and it was because they didn't do due diligence. They let someone in with a fake form. It was a, a mm. fake MMAR form. And to the untrained eye, it looks it looks like an MMAR, but it's just a big pink sheet. Oh, it's the pink sheet. It's the pink sheet. And that's sort of what happened. There was like this group of people who were generally operating under a strictly medicinal um, standard. But then they, they had a, you know, a, an opening for these kind of opportunities. And that's where a lot of them slid in. Like I remember hearing a lot of, oh, we were still attacked because we were medicinal, we did it medicinal, so now we switched recreational. But it was no, you were medicinal, it's just you didn't have due diligence to handle the medical documentation in order to avoid from uh, being raided. And, and, and maybe, from to go further, like there are certain standards that you have to have for handling medical documents, and all of those need to be filed, right? Followed, sorry. Yeah. So, you know, here we are. Like yeah, it was a yeah. shit show. We had Vancouver come over, and just took over, like, all the guys who weren't getting licensed out there that, that weren't getting regulated. And some of them were. And it's like, okay, let's, let's do it in Toronto, man. And That's when all of a sudden... It's, that it's caused a different a few, city. That caused a few oh. issues in Toronto. I think. Yeah. We operate differently. We're more conservative, right? Like, we're, we're a conservative, like, city. And we weren't yeah. ready for it. Yeah, because I can remember for years there, it just seemed like there was just a handful of dispensaries that were out there. And then mm-hmm. all of a sudden, it just... Like huge, there's just hundreds right. of them. <laughs> yeah. If you remember, I think it was um, shoot. They opened up real nice and big in the Canawide, and they opened up in uh, in Kensington, and it was like boom, nice big weed leaf, but mm-hmm. it was very uh, medicinal. Like they still, you could, anyone could walk in and out. You could ask some questions, you could learn, but mm-hmm. you um, you would still need a medical prescription to purchase anything, right? right? To be served any medicine. And yeah. and it just seemed like there was that there was just like this lull. It was it was real nice. I think it was like before twenty fifteen, maybe even halfway into twenty fifteen. If it was everything was like kind of real. If cool. I remember correctly, it it kind of started when that place blew up uh, in Kensington. Oh, yeah. Right. Remember huh. when, one yeah. of the places they were they were doing some concentrates or something downstairs yeah. and yeah. There was an explosion. And then, and then they started going in shortly after, you know, mm-hmm. uh, and looking around. I, it, I mean, I've been in Toronto now since January of last year. Mm-hmm. I don't have a dispensary to go to in Toronto. I mean, I have friends that are uh, that, that run dispensaries, but yeah. they're all. Uh, you know, you got to go in and do the process and yada yada and yada yada. And at this point. I don't want to. 
you know, mm-hmm. I mean, uh, mm-hmm. sure, there's a little bit of paperwork you got to do. But, I mean, I don't have time to be running to my doctor's office and getting my medical history and, and then taking it over and having an interview. And I don't have that kind of time. I kind of like being able to walk into a store when there's somebody knowledgeable behind a counter and going, hey, uh, what did you try this week? Can you let me know? I need a sativa and a dominant. A, a side and then uh, a fifty-fifty and a and an indica, right? Mm-hmm. And they and they make those suggestions. You people make those suggestions. I'm a member of your club, but it's out right. of the way for me. You know, sure. It, it, there used to be places where I could just zip down the road and walk in and come out. We need those places. They have cut our feet off at our ankles. Right. Well, would that yeah. not be similar to uh, um, a retail store, Al? Yeah. This is where Justin is talking about doing dil- due diligence and making sure that there's the patient. Yeah. Uh, you know what? I mean, uh, the OCS mm-hmm. Corporation have said, LCBO has said, Health Canada has said, when you go in there, you'll look Stage. at the specs on a card yeah. and you'll choose what you want. And you're not allowed to say, excuse me, have you tried this? What does this do for you? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But online, online, uh, how are you going to do that? What are you going to put or do? A little chat? It could be anybody. Mm -hmm. You know, put a little chat Mm -hmm. thing that comes up and take your order, please. No, it could be anybody. How do you verify somebody like that? It it becomes uh, sort of personalized, but I think more important in a medical medicinal aspect and to kind of like rewind a little bit i'm i think that you know we do need more cannabis stores i don't know if this whole rollout's going to work properly like it's yeah. looking like a real mess i think that there's some initiatives happening now where they're actually mm-hmm. trying to uh incorporate some like mmar acmpr gardens into the legal market mm-hmm. to kind of fill the gap right so that's interesting that's exciting but, yeah, um, it's it's. I think it's going to be a little while before we have that access on the corner, like uh, where it was kind of looking like we even were a few years like ago you, in a gray tw- area. With twenty five stores for the whole province, it's going to take a while, I think, before anybody feels like there's a store around the corner. <laughs> oh yeah, we're yeah. we're we're like five years <laughs> out. We're about five yeah. years out, and then another five years. We have we have a whole lot of things in the way. We have uh, constitutional challenges, potential government shifts, um, the rollout, the public. Uh, there's going to be it's 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 so much. All, everything that's happening now, it's just it's it's just beginning. This is the infancy of a, mm-hmm. of a new, already existing industry, and it's fascinating. Like we're going to see whatever the challenges happens now, and 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 it's that's why it's important to keep fighting. Like we have so much work to do. You know, if we all just give up, it'll be a corporate world, and and we can't. We just gotta, gotta keep chugging along and keep fighting. And and if and fuck, man, like find people. Like I don't want to say go to jail, but like we gotta do what we gotta do here. Yeah. You know, so, like, this is serious. They were now. Al, you mentioned you can't go into the store, into an OCS store, and talk. Uh, you know, ask medical yeah. information or anything like that. Now we see the government has has licensed shoppers drug mart in order to be able to to uh, distribute cannabis, but you can't like you might be able to medical cannabis correct, but you can't even walk in there and walk out with it. It's still no, that, it's still a mail system. That it's you got that, a brick and, and that's another five years as well. Yeah, like, but you know what's kind of cool with the shoppers drug mart, they have like a portal, and I forget how many. There's more than six LPs. In one spot, right? Mm-hmm. So if you hook onto there and you're going to buy, instead of just being stuck with one who you might not be happy with, then you get to pick six that you might not be well, happy with, right? That, and that, and that's <laughs> great, Justin. But uh, that's great, Justin. But being on ODSP, I can't afford that. And and until okay. it's covered by my ODSP or some kind of insurance, uh, I can't afford that price. I I have no choice at this point to either get from the guy down the road or uh, other means who are, are, are more compassionate than, than anywhere. Mm-hmm. I mean, you, you, but know, you know what, like under the HCMPR, 
Yep. If you were to kind of go out of your way and and because you need it for medicinal reasons, like I'm yep. not one to say, like I, I don't even want to debate. Like I, I would probably lose the debate if, if if someone was to argue if they should get a card and they weren't sick. You know, especially today, especially today, go get a card, man. Stay out of jail. Like this isn't worth it. But at the same time, um, yeah. Sorry, man. Lost my train of thought there. Not a problem. <laughs> <laughs> um, but okay, so when it comes to like shoppers, you got the choice of six different places where you can get your cannabis from. You, Al, you're talking about prices and stuff like that. Now, if they came up ah, with these, get with the these little, grower. sorry, 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 to get the designated grower, go out of your way, get the thing, get someone to grow for you. This is where we got to work together. It's not like mm-hmm. it, we're not going to have stores pop up tomorrow and have that access, yeah. and it makes no sense to yell about it. What we can do is we can work together. We can get Jim growing for John and Ann growing for Tim and Tim giving it to Joan and, and everyone helping everybody out, right? Like, they have this in place. and It's there and to be used. Yeah. There. Yeah. You yeah. know, like a lot of our club is that. It's it's communal. It's getting patients to help each other and, and work through this situation, right? Or all be- which, which apparently uh, is uh, gray. Patients helping patients. There's not much they can do. I mean, we are allowed wow. to, to to help another patient. We are allowed to take a donation for helping that patient. Uh, mm. You know, I mean, gifting is allowed as well. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I mean, and here's the yeah. wild thing is that now it even looks like people could even make money off of their girls, which a lot of people have been doing for a long time. But yes. like instead of that kind of it looks like a major positive, right, for everybody. Like if if it should have been done maybe in the beginning, that we should have just regulated everything, right? Yeah. But, well, you know, you know, there's that shortage that's going on now, and they haven't even introduced the edible concentrates, all that type of mm-hmm. market into it yet either. And it's going to take more mm-hmm. product. Oh yeah. So at least it's going to bring everybody to the table, hopefully. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Everyone who's you know, been gray, they can go into the legal market in, in hopefully a less regulated manner. It seems like it. they're going to have to. They're going to have to come down on the regulations and allow some of this. And uh, that's exciting. Like, you know. Well, they, isn't that what the micro grower is supposed to be is to allow maybe some people who are on the, you know, that don't have millions and millions, allow them an opportunity to get involved? It, but, but it's not It's not for most people. Your average mm-hmm person i don't think would be able to pull it off Correct. you need a bit of a team you need mm-hmm. a certain amount of investment and yeah. um, like i i built a business plan for a, a micro girl and oh, yeah. you know it was it was fairly profitable and everything good and, and you know it wasn't 100 percent finished the, the plan but um it, w- it was looking pretty good and it, it would make sense however i don't know if it's attainable for like Someone who is just even even if you were just like oh, going to open up your your own small you know a small bong store or something like that I think it's it's going to be a few hundred thousand to get going and mm-hmm. then uh, you know so there's risk involved as well like I, I I would worry about these the the pricing there's so many issues and uh, yeah yeah but yeah. no so now but the micro so that's not that was the idea like the idea I was great like there. The idea yeah. of allowing everyone to come in and switch over, it just didn't make a whole lot of sense. But now, if we can get away so that it's integrated properly through just allowing the MMARs as they are and just test the cannabis. If it's clean, well, if it doesn't have any gold, it, if it doesn't have any pesticide, then why exactly. can't it be sold? What, what Actually, the fuck else do we need? Part of my life. Exactly. That's one of the uh, the licensed producer out of Coburg. They've actually come right out in, in the newspaper and said that, you know, why don't yeah. we allow these other these other people who have been yeah. this, supplying dispensaries to allow them to supply the new system, but mm-hmm. do batch testing to make sure that the product is fine? That's it. And tax no. it. And tax. There, there well, you yeah. go. You get the whole yeah. like, why not jump on board? And I think it's happening. There's a group starting uh, right now in BC that's working on it, and I'll pull up their information. We need some doo 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 music for here. <laughs> yeah, it's um, it says BC's 
licensed medical craft cannabis producers launching a co-op, right? Oh, so, yes, I saw so, that. Right. Yes. Uh, Go ahead. Yeah, the BC, the BC Small Cannabis Producers and Processors Co-op is planning and inco- is planning to incorporate under provincial cooperative legislation to help maintain the province's position and global cannabis leader. Blah, blah, blah. The company announced Tuesday BC has a lot to gain by ensuring thousands of existing Health Canada registered growers are active participants in Canada's cannabis economy. So it goes on from there, and it's definitely an article worth checking out. But that's what they're talking about is integrating the uh, the MMAR. So yeah. we're going to see exactly how this is done and how far we can spread it out, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Because if once, you know, one group like that can can get through, then that can hopefully open the gate for others. Right. And and if we're just talking about funding micro-grows, we're, 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 running, we're running into big walls, challenges. Yeah. We have to open this up. We have to treat it like the harmless herb that it is. You know, like these these packages for a benign plant. If you're if you're old enough and you have the the dexterity to open up a jar, then 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 you can you can smoke a joint. If you can't, you won't. There's it's benign. Edibles, sure. Concentrates, of course. But flour in these giant jars with a million pounds of packaging and waste. It's crazy. Yeah, I uh, I've, I remember when they first when they first came legal and you could see all this posters uh, people posting stuff on facebook the uh, videos and the pictures and that was a big huge complaint was all the uh, packaging uh, i know yeah and actually there was stuff. there was somebody on the east coast that was um uh going to start some type of business from all the packaging uh, yeah there is the, yeah yeah <laughs> I'm not sure. Track, I can't right? Yeah, exactly. I can't remember what they're going to do, but I know I, I uh, uh, read something about it. So, uh, but uh, all right, guys, let's take a break. Okie dokie. Oh. All right, uh, Justin. Um, hey. I usually try to connect the music to the uh, to, to the guest, and I think I've done that tonight, being that all these dispensaries are being raided. Uh, so tonight our music is from. Elvi Muska. I think I got her name right. Hopefully, Musky, Muska. And uh, the song we're going to hear is The War on Us. When we return, Al and I will continue our talk with Justin Lauses. We are listening to the Pace Radio Show. We are here live, 420radio.ca. Hey, this is Cheech. And this is Chong. And you're listening to Lifestyle Radio. What is it? Lifestyle Radio. Say it one more time. 420 Radio? Ooh. You're listening to Lifestyle Radio. Legacy 420 has medicinal and recreational products down to a science, literally. With two biochemists on staff and a chief scientific advisor, every product is tested in the Legacy 420 laboratory. Legacy 420, Ty and Denega. Open 9 to 9 every day. Visit Legacy420.com. Are you looking for cannabis news, education, and people's opinions? Are you looking to learn what Canadian and international cannabis advocates are doing? Not only now, but what got them to this point in their lives, and what does the future hold for them? Do you want to learn how patients are using cannabis as a daily medication, or learn how their cannabis use helps them with their medical condition? If you answered yes to any of these questions, then I'm going to suggest to you to tune in to Lifestyle Radio. Catch their live weekly shows and have your questions and concerns answered and find the experience you're looking for. Monday, catch your weekly news broadcast with the Reef Reporters. Then on Wednesday, get several hours worth of cannabis public education. We get things started with cannabis and coffee with Tamarawana. Finish up your evening with the award-winning Pace Radio Show 
with Al Graham and no week would be complete without tuning into Friday night's program, the 420 Radio Show featuring Al Rapp and the 420 Radio Crew, Mary Jane Baker and Marcel Gagnac. Cannabis is a lifestyle and you can catch all your cannabis lifestyle information right here at 420radio.ca. Tune in to DJ Passion from the land of Ganja, the island of Jamaica, when he comes to you live every Saturday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on 420radio.ca. Enjoy the buzz of legalization with Canada's, your friendly neighborhood Campbellford head shop. From lights to plant nutrients, books, consumption accessories, and more, we've got all your basics to grow or consume cannabis. Let us help you grow your four with weekly Tuesday night gardening sessions for beginners. Visit our info center or take a look at our piercing services and body jewelry, now available in store through Campbellford Lifestyle Shop. Canada's, more than just a head shop. 17 Bridge Street West, Campbellford. Welcome back. Uh, you're listening to the Pace Radio Show. We are live here at 420radio.ca. Tonight in the program, I got uh, Justin Lousas here with us, and I got uh, Al Rapp. He's filling in for Kim Cooper because Kim is in the hospital with pancreatitis. Well, Al and Justin, let's move on to a different subject, something we haven't touched on yet. And something that is very important, and we are seeing um, situations that dealing with opioids across the country, and I thought that maybe we might want to touch on that. Yeah, great. Yeah, it's, um, it's important. It's a national crisis. It's serious. And I think that there's, like, we don't know how to fix the problem. We could all have a mm-hmm. bunch of ideas. But if we have this, like multi-pronged, multi-faceted approach, grassroots, government, um, every level, business, it would be, it would just be incredible. And we're seeing a lot of it. We're seeing some mm-hmm. of it. And, and that's what's making a difference. And, you know, like uh, Neil Magnuson down in, in Vancouver there, and there's so many nice initiatives. And, 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 well, those are even their own subjects. We could dig deep on that. But I think it's just... It takes, it's going to take everyone working together to kind of chip away at this issue and, and save lives. Like, people are dying. And, and these aren't, you know, it's, it's like a new class of drugs. It's not, you know, uh, you're, you're, it's, it's a pharmaceutical crisis. And, yeah, and a lot of people is. are misled yeah. into these um, addictions. And they need help getting out, right? So, so yeah. I've had the chance because I do hope with Paula at at Ganjanistas, right. and um, which is the Hamilton Opiate Prevention Experiment, and what yeah. we're trying to do is relieve some suffering for one, uh, also provide some conversation, and we're we're trying to lean towards finding several people we can actually put on a program, and see if it really works, but. Uh, the people that have been coming in, uh, most of them have been homeless, uh, living mm-hmm. down in the ravine down in Hamilton, uh, and and they just want a little relief uh, whenever we give it to them, you know. Right. Uh, is it helping? I'm not sure yet at this point because we haven't had anybody come in and mm-hmm. and kind of say this is my issues, this is that, this is this, and this you is know helping. What? You know, we should we should talk because what we've created here with the gateway out this program yep. I'm working on, mm-hmm. it was actually 2016. I was crazy. I just realized I was reading this. It was a Vice article, and they asked me to to try and figure out this about the opioid wow. crisis, yep. if cannabis was working, and yep. if I could just ask around. And I know they ask a few different people who are you know just like well connected uh-huh. and and whatever. 
And I was just trying to help do a little bit of investigation for them. So everyone's coming back, and it's just like cookie this, double strength, yeah. extra joint. And and it was it wasn't a lot of uh, like Feedback. data, anything yeah. clinical, nothing well, really that you could take to a doctor, right? What they are so, saying to us is the edibles are helping. Definitely. So we need to get beyond that because to a yes. doctor, that doesn't mean a lot. So what no. we're trying to create is this: is right now you're gonna say, "Ow, ow!" If you want to be a a host of this Gateway Out program, we're gonna mail you a package. It's gonna teach you about cannabis. How to take um, understanding what a bag, if it weighs 10 grams a shake or even handfuls, like real basic understandings. So you could then even learn terminology as well to understand what a handful of shake could mean in milligrams. Yeah. And then to be able to have a sheet with you as well, that's your titration sheet. So you're taking this, you're going to have words to learn, a uh, peer to peer environment setting. There's uh, like to shake AA without, without the uh, 12 steps. Okay. You take out the um, the uh, religion, and and you add in a science based approach to healing, understanding the medicine. Now, say say for an example, let's throw it out there. Like, and I'm getting a lot of help here. My friend Charlene Freedom, she's jumped yeah, on recently. Yeah. Just, yeah, yeah, she, Charlene, yeah, yeah, she knows she's she's a real fan of your show, and um, she's helping me out a lot. And we're reaching out to try and bring in uh, a lot of people to just make this as, as grand and great to really impact, to really, because, so, okay, so imagine the, the, the greatest good is just to be able to help people on yes. the one-to-one basis. As yes. many people as we can help, one person is a success. But now, let's imagine there's a few successes, and there's 10 people in a class, right? Now, we have two people that ace the class. They're going to go to their doctor, and they're going to say to him, sir, I'm, I titrated myself off of this horrible medication with... 50 milligrams daily, four times, 10 milligrams CBD. And you start talking in a language that makes them understand it, right? Yes. Not only are they helping themselves, and then there's all these other things. I'm not going to let it all out now, and it's going to be on social media, across, and, and hopefully connecting everyone and, and really filling the void that we feel is, is, is really participating in, in making it harder for people to heal and therefore need more medication. So we're just trying to create a support program, education, and um, yeah, try and try and save a life or two. Awesome, awesome. It's good because you know, we're seeing that uh, you know across the country. We've seen them in Toronto. We've seen them out in Vancouver, and, and we're seeing uh, benefits. People, like you're saying, you know, people coming back and it, it's helping we, them we, out. We have about ten, we have about ten regulars now that come every every right. other week. Yeah. Yeah, and and every and every now and then, uh, uh, you know, one of the soup kitchens will send somebody over. Uh, the uh, the uh, I, I guess the nuns over at the uh, Good Shepherd Women's Shelter have heard about us because we sent some flyers oh, nice. over. We even sent yeah. uh, we what we did was we sent a couple of the regulars out that live in the neighborhood uh, to some of the the methadone clinics. Uh, the shelters, the soup kitchens, Beautiful. and we actually took a pack. They actually took packs with them to show wow. to show uh, uh, the sisters what we were actually doing. So every now and then, a new person shows up and says, "I was just at the, at at the Y, and they told me to come over here." Wow! Right. Beautiful. Yeah. So I mean, I I got a little discouraged because nobody came one week. And I was like, you know what? It's before Christmas. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. You just got to be persistent for them right. so that they know yeah. you're there. And, uh, in fact, I couldn't get in last week. We were supposed to do one. And there were a few nasty remarks made by, by people oh, no. who came in. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because well, we didn't hurting. have any. We did, yeah, they're hurting and we didn't have anything they're prepared. expecting relief. That's yeah. right. Yeah. So, you All know, right. Uh, it, it's it's unfortunate that they they also have to realize that that you know we're doing this out of our own accord for them mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. you know we're new to this and we're we're trying and and yeah. we'll get there. Right. But and you're taking right. your risks. Yeah, that's right. Definitely. But the idea the, the idea and is to be there one day, two days, twice a month. You know. Mm -hmm. uh, and they know that, and they actually walk in from wherever they're living, 
and 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 come and say hi and have a coffee and look we get donations for mm-hmm. for clothing are you doing things like that as well do you get there donations is... and stuff not yet but that's mm-hmm. going to be part of like a multi-pronged approach so we'll incorporate we... you know anything for support Right, we have but... people coming in with food, with clothes. Um, uh, somebody yeah. dropped off a case of hand warmers. You know, nice. so yeah. yeah. You, you know, here's an interesting thing. Check this out. With the new, um, with the new laws and advertising and whatnot, I was very discouraged. It was it was strange. Where I have to remove Sage from my logo. Sage is my dog. She's a logo for just compassion, right? But Why? in fairness, well, it's a it's a cute dog. Right, so that could that could draw in a child for an child, example. That's a, yeah. that's a theory, right? It's a, it's appealing to a child, right? And I get it, and I'm I'm cool with it. I've never once put her on a product or anything like that. Never. There's some, but there's some children that are attracted to people sitting there with the finger up, you know? Fair. <laughs> Maybe we don't put that on the label either. But fair. So anyway, so I was thinking to myself, I'm like, fuck, what do I do? That, that she's the epitome of compassion. It wasn't about cannabis. It was about compassion. So I'm thinking to myself, yeah. okay, what do we do? What do we do? So then I, I said, no, I, I've got to divide. So just compassion now has evolved as a brand. It's about compassion. It's about spreading hope, spreading love, spreading compassion. Just compassion cannabis is now a division of just compassion. So like some of the efforts of just compassion, like I have a local women's shelter that I like to help out with, food drives, cans, every uh holiday season etc Excellent. and Excellent. these types of yeah these types of um reach out programs and then yeah. the one the one patient to patient especially um but i want to take it to a next level like i'm i'm i, I really think i want you know uh I, I, there's there's so much good we can do we have this yeah. crisis that the cannabis can help but i think there's there's just like a lot of people a lot of people need a lot of help we have a lot of crises in our country alone you know, like yeah. we're a great place, one of the greatest places to live, but there's still a lot of people here that, that are struggling, you know, right. and why, why? There's no, there's no need for it. Uh, yeah, exactly. Because, you know, we can see that there's an epidemic that's, you know, North America wide yep. uh, of, of the opioid situation. And more and more patients are speaking up and saying how they're using cannabis and order to help them uh, deal with the opioid situation, you would think that maybe more doctors would listen to this and, and, and be more open to giving their patients the but option of, of cannabis instead of the but, but Al, could you imagine, if, if not everyone, but could you imagine if there was a whole ton coast to coast of, of properly educated people? Because uh, there has to be, like, I, I know there's, there's, like, the more we can, I know with my doctor... When I talk to him about in his language, if you will, or my best attempt mm-hmm. at it, he appreciates it. He listens to me. He takes me serious, right? And right. we have honest conversations about cannabis as medicine to my neurologist. All of my doctors, all of my doctors are very open with me and very open-minded. And I think that if we approach it like that and we can mm-hmm. teach people how to, how to have the right conversation, then we can maybe switch it a little bit. You know what I mean? Just nudge the table a little. I don't know. Fuck. Like... <laughs> we all we know, just gotta uh, try. You, we start getting the doctors on board. We're supporting each other. I yeah. um, and learning. Like the more we can teach, the more we can share, yeah. and the peer to peer support. Like these things are so important. Um, you know, yeah. there is there there is a there are courses available for medical practitioners and nurses and 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 nurses aides and all that. Uh, I was talking with a gal who is a nurse at a hospital. I won't say where. And she said that they, you know, the, the, I guess, I guess Health Canada offers courses to educate physicians and they just don't take it. Who, oh, some, who even are nurses, taking some it? Do. Well, that's what I was uh-huh. going to say. Who are engaging in it mm-hmm. and taking it are the nurse practitioners because they're mm-hmm. new. They're new nurses and they're here to practice medicine and they're, hungry. and they're hungry, and they want to be a part of the 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 uh, right way to do things. I guess oh, the last time, yeah. trust me, the last time I went into the emerge, yeah. I go in there, and I've never seen this girl. It's strange when they start knowing you at emerge, and you know the staff. There's like, hey, yeah, hey, how you doing? And uh, <laughs> so, check this out. Now it's been two years where I've only been to emergency once, 
And that used to be every four months. And they miss right? you. So nice. This is it's incredible. But anyway, um, so I sit down and this girl there, she's taking me in and she's like, okay, a little medicine you're taking, whatever, super nice. And then I was like, oh, we know all that. And then she's like, oh, how many milligrams? She was asking me questions, interacting yes. with me, yes, right, engaging. And I, it mm-hmm. took me very seriously. It was the first time that I've seen that happen. And I was just in awe. And that was over a year ago. I Even when I go for my updates at the pharmacy, uh, I always, they, they say this, 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 and this. And now it just shows up on my file. And are you still taking cannabis? And I'm yes. And they're like, for what? And I'm like, everything else. <laughs> you know, um, I, but my my doctor, uh, who I originally went to, I've been seeing him for twenty years or more, uh, since my twenties. So yeah, um, wow. when I asked him, it was like I said, well, "How? What are your feelings on cannabis? And do you think it would help me?" And he says, "Flat out, I have no feelings on it, one way or another. We know it helps with pain and other symptoms." And he sent me to calm. That was twelve years ago. Mm. Okay. Oh, wow. And but 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 and then every time after that, like I said, Oh, I'm taking the oil. He said, Can you show me it? And and he makes notes and I gave him samples and, and stuff. So I mean he's got all that shit, my whole steps in my medical wow. history. Now, uh, when I moved up north, I got another doctor, a female doctor, five years. Uh, she never laid a hand on me, but when cannabis was brought up, she actually brought up the uh, physicians and surgeons website and showed me where it says, please rethink, or however way they worded it, don't prescribe cannabis. She said, I'm not allowed, but I'll send you to a clinic. You know, yep, why would you yep, say yep. she's, yeah, yeah. Even, so I'm going back even to my recently, old doctor. <laughs> that's, that's, hey, there was, there was a lot of unknowns and they just wanted to help. They were hearing it helps. Yes. Let's get you to a place. We heard, we know about this place, calm. But they weren't um, willing PCC. to take the commitment on their own. No. Because they, even, my, even when, when I opened up in 20. doctor said the reason he didn't want to sign at first, he eventually did. But the reason he sent me down to calm and wouldn't just sign me off uh, when and, and it was back when I guess it was a section 56 back then uh, mm-hmm. or whatever. But uh, because he back did then, not yeah. he did not know anything about dosing. Mm-hmm. That was his exact words. I don't know anything about dosing. I'm going to send you somewhere that does. Right. But well, you hit the Even nail though, on the head. It's, and he, it's, he knew it's he was sending me medicine. to an illegal entity. Mm-hmm. But you were going to get help there. That's right. A real doctor. In that's what a real doctor does, takes chances. Hippocratic oath. They got to yeah. follow it. Like yeah. in 2015 at my Scarborough location when we opened up there, that was <laughs> special. That was crazy. It was before the raids, before all that. It was really nice. Scarborough's first dispensary. And uh, we were like, I was getting doctors pers- like just referring to me, like, oh yeah, I was referred to you by doctor. I'm, like, I'm not a doctor, I don't know. So okay, we'll help you out, right? And it was it, it was a really cool experience, and and you got to meet a lot of neat doctors and talk with them and learn and and try to educate them because they're hungry for knowledge too, right? And yeah. it's been special, like those. It's it's where we are even i know there's a lot of negativity around but i'm 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 really excited for legalization like almost once a week or twice a week we're seeing real serious studies for medical cannabis and this rollout shit and it's a corporate greedy takeover but you know i think it's going to it's going to be it's going to be maybe not better before it's worse but it is going to get better you know yeah yeah it will eventually yeah Mm. Um, just so you know, uh, even though Kim's not here, she still has something to say. She has sent me a message letting, yeah. me, letting us know that they were accepting where she is as far as the cannabis issue because they seem to know quite a bit and understand FECO, you know, which is fully extracted cannabis oil. A lot of people like to call it RSO. Um, but um, Homage she to was, yeah, they, yeah, they, she was surprised that... Uh, they were accepting and that uh, they knew a lot of they, that they knew anything about it so it's amazing it's needed it's needed yeah it's exactly one less stress. 
Like you're yeah. like, what is she going through right now? It's hell, right? Horrible. Yeah, for sure. And and then and then even my friend, this is amazing. I didn't realize my friend Naomi had to go outside to medicate and she's having a real hard time. And and this is a woman who came out to us to 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 in in I guess 2015 now when we did the session in the street. She the yeah. first one. She almost got hit by a cab. She got nicked by it, right? And yes, um, yes. It's, That's it's, when you were stopping the traffic, wasn't it? When you're yeah, walking man. down the middle of the lights and, and stopping all the traffic. I think we have to do it again. <laughs> like what's but like, we do, but we didn't do anything. Like what are we? We need a strategized approach to really remedy this situation. We cannot have sick patients going out into the cold <laughs> to, to to medicate. This is madness. Fucking I posted madness. that today. You know, forcing patients to go out and medicate mm. in this weather. You know, feeling like minus thirty five. How is that helping anybody? Right. That was the whole point with the, yeah. the session in the street. It was like, look, I'm sick. My friends are sick. We're out here. You, I don't want to be here. This is the last thing in the world I want to do. Trust me. It's, it's and cruel and humane punishment. So imagine now. We could do it because it's summertime. What are we going to do in the winter? Yeah. You can't go in the, there. Could you imagine? Like you're, you're, You can't. You're not going to – who does that? Who's going to put a sick person, old, young, doesn't matter, to put into a like a situation where they're going to be – you know, it's exacerbating your symptoms. I don't care what you're suffering yeah. from. Standing well, out in the cold is not helping you. Laws, bylaws, regulations, and condos, condo stuff, you know, apartments forbidding any yeah. cannabis use whatsoever in them. They did uh, it's it in my be... mom's building. There, yeah, they have outlawed cannabis out. use on the property, and it it's you know it's uh, uh she's been there ten years now, and and uh, I was very cautious about smoking. In fact, most of the time she was gracious enough to uh, let me use my shatterizer in the living room, but I didn't smoke cannabis in the apartment itself because I don't want to cause issues. She did have some issues with the neighbor. One of the neighbors there made some comments once. But, you know, I'm licensed, so... <laughs> yeah, <there> you <laughs> That's right. You're licensed now, that's for sure. No. It, it shouldn't it. matter. It shouldn't matter. No. No, it shouldn't. No. And, you know, it's just... It's yeah. I'm just trying. I'm everyone just thinking of somebody uses, who's being forced out there. Everyone, you, everyone who uses cannabis in any way is using it for a reason. Okay, either but to I think relax. we could argue. Yeah, but we could argue therapeutic versus medicinal. Sure. Like, yeah, and, and sure. I don't. I don't necessarily think that someone's therapeutic need should potentially offset someone else's whatever like there's so many and these are this is where the next five years are going to take us yeah. right like where by law it's all it's it's all going to be interesting i don't know right like i like even me after we did the session in the street i was like guys put your joints out like we don't want to be smoking joints out here right young and blue are like we can't you know we're, these guys are coming out of their offices we don't want to be going now you can though faces. it's disrespectful you, you I, we could have we, we could have yeah. still I, it's just disrespectful no, but now, never you that can, guy. now you can legally yeah, but you don't want to. And especially as a group, I recommend this. Like, you don't want to be out there unless you're, like, really making a point, like blowing smoke in anyone's face or anything like that. We went into con- the, the thing. We even we, we shut it down. But then as soon as it was over, it was like, you know, let's, let's you know, go over here and smoke. And, you know, because it smells. Like, even same I, as... I, I got to disagree with that, Justin. I mean, I have been walking around the city of Toronto since I was 19 years old smoking pot. And I'm not yeah. going to change that. If I want to go out and go for a walk and light up a joint and walk down the street, just as a cigarette smoker does, uh, it's legal to do that now. And I will do that in a group or in a single. Yeah, but or, I, you know. I still think it's, I think it's rude when people walk around with cigarettes, especially if there's kids around and stuff like that. I, yeah. Yeah. Smoke, man. Yeah. Why I'm I very here? cautious of the surrounding. Smells, oh, I'm, I'm yeah. very cautious of the surrounding. What's going on in the area? Of course, I'm not okay. going to yeah, stand yeah. there and watch uh, uh, you know a bunch of six year olds playing uh, uh, hockey uh, and and smoke mm-hmm. a joint. Right, you know, right. I'm not going to do that. But I mean, there's nothing wrong 
the government says that I can walk down the street now. We've, we, we've gone over that hurdle. It almost didn't happen. Where can't you do that? Quebec, right? Yeah, there's lots of, yeah, uh, Atlantic provinces. There's places out there where you can't uh, consume publicly. Yeah, even uh, even Nova Scotia, I believe, and they yeah. have the highest highest per capita of of cannabis use. I think I think they have token <laughs> spots. Do they through the to- L- through the retail system? Do, do you remember when all these conversations started about five years ago, uh, maybe maybe even three years ago? Um, all of a sudden, a picture showed up. They were talking about smoking areas, where you can smoke, where you can't. It was before the the smoke free Ontario took hold. Uh, a sign popped up in a hospital uh, uh, parking lot smoking area that said designated vaping area or something like that or designated mm-hmm. the green logo. That's right. And yeah. it, it they they apologized and said that it wasn't supposed to be put out yet. That's that's what I got from the article. But. We need those. I talked to a nurse at a hospital where there was a friend. I said, do you have an area where people can smoke cigarettes? She said, yes, we do. Uh, Outside here, we have a garden where people can go and they can smoke cigarettes. I said, do you have an area where people can use cannabis? No, we don't, but we're changing the garden into a non-smoking meditation area for patients to use their medication. Oh, okay. So, and that was in a very small uh, town hospital. Mm. Whether or not, but it that, shows you the initiatives uh, happening, yeah, right? Whether or not that uh, uh, is going to happen, who knows? Okay. I actually have a. I have. A, I'm working on a. I, don't, I can't talk too much about it, but I think there's 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 inventions out there that could help us. I'll just leave it at that. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, anyways, well, let's go for a break talking about anyway. Cool. Let's take another commercial break. All right? Yep. Sounds good. Okay. Um, tonight's uh, featured artist is Alvi Mazika. I'm sorry, Alvi, I can't get your name right. That's not normal. That's not normal. Uh, we're going to hear some more of her song, War on Us. Then afterwards, Al and I will continue this conversation with our guest, Justin Lauses. You're listening to the Pace Radio Show. We are live here at 420radio.ca. And his dogs. So what are you doing? <laughs> Nothing. Why not? Trying to get on the Slice That Radio website. Sounds like a cool website. Yeah, it's all right. Oh, I might have it. You might have it. You're listening to Lifestyle Radio. Enjoy the buzz of legalization with Canadays, your friendly neighborhood Campbellford head shop. From lights to plant nutrients, books, consumption accessories, and more, we've got all your basics to grow or consume cannabis. Let us help you grow your four with weekly Tuesday night gardening sessions for beginners. Visit our info center or take a look at our piercing services and body jewelry, now available in-store through Campbellford Lifestyle Shop. Canadays, more than just a head shop. 17 Bridge Street West, Campbellford. Are you looking for cannabis news, education, and people's opinions? Are you looking to learn what Canadian and international cannabis advocates are doing? Not only now, but what got them to this point in their lives, and what does the future hold for them? Do you want to learn how patients are using cannabis as their daily medication, or learn how their cannabis use helps them with their medical condition? If you answered yes to any of these questions, then I'm going to suggest to you to tune in to Lifestyle Radio. Catch their live weekly shows and have your questions and concerns answered and find the experience you're looking for. Monday, catch your weekly news broadcast with the Reef Reporters. Then on Wednesday, get several hours worth of cannabis public education. We get things started with cannabis and coffee with Tamarawana. Finish up your evening with the award-winning Pace Radio Show with Al Graham. And no week would be complete without tuning into Friday night's program, the 420 Radio Show featuring Al Rapp 
and the 420 radio crew, Mary Jane Baker and Marcel Gagnac. Cannabis is a lifestyle, and you can catch all your cannabis lifestyle information right here at 420radio.ca. Tune in to DJ Passion from the land of Ganja, the island of Jamaica, when he comes to you live every Saturday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on 420radio.ca. Legacy 420 has medicinal and recreational products down to a science, literally. With two biochemists on staff and a chief scientific advisor, every product is tested in the Legacy 420 laboratory. Legacy 420, Ty and Denega. Open 9 to 9 every day. Visit Legacy420.com. Three generations of hemp, cannabis, marijuana prohibition greatly contribute to planetary deforestation, pollution, and ozone destruction. Let hemp compete in construction, paper, fiber, fuel, nutritional, and pharmaceutical corporations. Cannabis has been safe, efficient medicine for many illnesses throughout all generations and for natural relaxation. Still, we spend hundreds of billions of dollars in Hey, welcome back, and thanks for tuning into the program. Uh, we are being broadcasted, as always, here at 420radio.ca, but we're also available as podcasts at YouTube, iTunes, iHeartRadio, uh, Sono, as well as Spotify. Tonight, the uh, music we feature was by LV Music. Uh, I know I'm going to get it wrong every time. And her song, The War on Drugs. LV is a vocal uh, cannabis advocate and relies on cannabis to keep her glaucoma under control. And actually, uh, she is part of the USA Cannabis Program, and she's been involved in that program since 1988, and says that her experience with cannabis is proof that it works as a medicine. So if you enjoyed that song, you can take a look on uh, YouTube, see if you can find it. It's online somewhere. I want to. Yes, it's, yeah, it's a good song. So. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have enough room to play the whole thing, but, you know, we get little snippets and people get to uh, uh, look forward to uh, if we get some interest on it. I well, guys. There's a little article here from the Daily Hive that just popped up yep. here. It says it's going to feel like 36 degrees warmer in Toronto this weekend. Oh, nice. So all this <laughs> snow will probably be gone by the end of the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're wow. actually, um, they're talking like a high of four degrees, uh, I believe it's next week, for yeah. a day or two, yeah. and the snow is going to melt, and then, you know, we're going from my, feeling like minus three to, to above zero within a day or two, you know, um, uh, Justin, with your medical condition, that must do out of whack. Oh, I can't, I... I can't. I, I would I would much prefer a nice, cool, standard winter that I was used to growing up with, like, and then a normal summer. And the jumps, the ups and downs, I'm finding very hard on my health. And yeah. uh, just the, 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 it's just hard to manage. It's something I don't. I'm not a doctor. It's just I'm. It's really messing me up. Because yeah. I, if I go out in the cold, I get stiff. If I go out in the in the warm, I turn like jello. So it's like a weird thing what's happening inside. How they used to test people for MS before, like, um, they have some of the modern science that they use now. They would throw people, <clears throat> they throw people in a hot bath. So you'd be in the hot bath, and it'd just be like, you'd be, you'd be spat, you'd turn to jello. So then, wow. if you have MS, you couldn't walk after, right? After depending, not everyone's case is a little bit different, but sure. you'd react differently, right? So. It just shows you I'm so sensitive. Like seriously, the other the first chill yeah. we had here, I didn't have a toucan, and I couldn't even get in a vehicle because my legs turned to like ice. They were frozen. Wow. Ah. Yeah, that's what I mean. This up and down stuff's got to be you know a uh, real pain yeah. for for you. And I know like myself, everyone. Uh, yeah, when, when, the, when the sun st- sun starts going down and the cold <clears throat> damp air comes in at nighttime. Stiff as a board, yep. sore all over arms, legs. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, all right, uh, we've talked about dispensaries. We've talked about uh, opioids. Uh, you're working on a new, a new project now. I guess you call it new, from what I understand. And that's oh, your yeah. cannabis news week. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. What do you want right. to tell us about that? 
Oh, sure. You know what? First of all, I want to say thank you uh, for giving me, you know, just a platform shouting out. I really appreciate it. It's solid, good on your parts. Um, just trying to get the word out. Same idea. Yeah. It's, um, I want to, I want to, like, I want to just make sure everyone can stay informed. But at the same time, I want to do, like, uh, it sounds a little nerdy, like, Rachel Maddow-style investigation for cannabis, right? Like, really dig deep. Let's find out who's who and talk. We, we could dig. I know a lot of people, uh, and we can find out the, the real roots of the stories, what's happening. Like, you know, we, we have some of these um, contaminations and recalls and whatnot. Yeah. And then they get they get washed away. We don't find out what really happens and like what's really going on to a lot of these stories. You know, we're, we're, I see a lot of interesting news like Afria. What happened yeah. there? Right. Like let's let's dig deep. I want to I want to I have a lot of questions and there's a lot of nonsense happening. There's um, insider trade like there's 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 so much happening that I think we need a we need a mi- microscope magnifying glass at least to uh, to start digging and un- uncovering some some nonsense that's happening around us right so uh investigative journalism right the yes. cannabis but at the same yes. time i just the, the basic the basic premise that's that's phase two as we're moving i have a new reporter working together and um trying to get some stories going it's pretty cool but i want to be at every event with a camera covering it i want to have video and um written articles as well from a newsletter turning into like you know a few pages a lot of information everything you need to know about cannabis news in one spot right on a weekly show once a week i'm going to come talk hey guys talking head justin here uh, i'm going to bring you what i feel are the most important stories of the week from mm-hmm. uh from my perspective and that's uh, right. i'm a medical patient i need cannabis it's my life i run a medical dispensary and, um, you know, I'm trying to fight the good fight, right? So yeah. I don't want to be so much about me, but just the perspective reporting on it. That's all. Try to keep it unbiased, but pre- representing, like, there's a voice that's not being heard. There's so much happening that's not being heard. There's a constitutional challenge in, in Newfoundland today. Wasn't on the news. Like, what's going on? We have to be the news. We have to get it out there. We have to dig deeper and get these stories heard. Yeah, because they're not they're not being covered by mainstream media unless it's something that's big, big, or catches. Yeah. Like even even with all the media, if you notice, I always have to make a deal with them. Not a deal like necessarily on paper, but it's like a give and take, right? So mm-hmm. they they perpetuate me without saying almost a lot of times that I'm just a, a dispensary without going into the very specifics. And no, we're a medical compassion club who do operates differently, but. They are rather have a guy in a wheelchair with a thing and a thing, and it looks good on a post and a dog and a weed story, and then they mux, mix it in with the other stuff. And I say, look, you have to know, you have to get it in the message that multiple sclerosis can be helped with cannabis. Okay. Yeah. And the rest we can we can fight about later, right? Yeah. So I think you gotta. The media is funny, right? And and. It's no one's fault. I'm not judging anyone. They have a job to do. They have a way they do it. Meetings is ratings. Ratings is more important than 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 news itself. It seems. Um, so you know we got to infiltrate and and you guys sure. you know like you know what it's about right? Yeah. I just yeah. Yeah, you know, for for myself, it's always been about getting the knowledge and the information mm-hmm. out there, whether it's news or medical stuff or whatever, because an informed right. public is an educated public. And people shouldn't just assume things like, you know, here in you know with Ontario we had that, that opting out thing and opting in for the municipalities, and right. here here we had uh, in my municipality we had um, uh, the staff recommended that they opt in. Seventy five percent of the people who took the survey said to opt in, and and uh, the municipality op- voted to opt out. Yeah. So, like, why? There, so, I'm on, old, I'm on that. Old, <laughs> yeah, it's old, uh, old school mentality. Right? Yeah, draconian almost. Well, not. It's just old school mentality, and it's going to take a little while. The one cool thing, I guess, is that you can opt in. Yeah, yeah, but you lose right? that. You lose out on some advantages. 
I, I did get uh, I, I wrote our local council and I got I did get some response back and, and one of the persons who responded back said <clears throat> that it was their job in order to keep the community safe and I thought me mean safe like where was you know we we have an LCBO store uh, within the last month our local gas station was held up and robbed a year before that uh, there was also a robbery at the same location so they're worried about safety of the community by having a cannabis store here well a, a gas station can attract the wrong people so you're going to ban gas stations and then also i would i would make the argument that that now because it's uh, and it's considered illicit that you you're going to have you know people trafficking that who maybe traffic other illicit things where Correct. once upon a time circa like before legalization, October seventeenth, you know your neighborhood uh, weed dealer, he's a normal guy, right? Nice yeah. guy. Yeah. Where, where, you know, now I don't know. I'm not involved. I don't know. I could just imagine that you might find people who are, you know, it's like a lot of people just don't want to sell it anymore because it's too risky. And then someone yeah. who might be open to selling something that's, you know, like coke or something, they don't think it's a big deal. And then they're like, oh, okay, we'll sell weed and then might get more business. So therefore, you're perpetuating a, a underground that you don't want to see flourish. So yeah. I think that argument could be made in those particular townships. Mm-hmm. Now, you know, you're, not, you're, 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 you're no, the local Coke dealer could be making extra money because no one has anywhere to buy their weed. Really? The local yeah. weed dealer is out of business. The nice guy who would always come with a smile and a thing. And, and, and now we have Jim, and I'm not worried about, I don't know, like, these are, this is it's all nonsense. It yeah, be, yeah. Right. There's a, there was a place that was uh, Saskatchewan that uh, has a business uh, dispensary or one of the legal stores now, uh, retail stores downtown, and they wanted it downtown in order to revitalize it. Aha. Uh-huh. Yep. Know? Yeah. Perfect sense, yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah, I mean, well, fact, people at least people, are, people are going to go to to that store, which yeah. then when, while they're there, they're going to maybe go shop at the store across the street. Or they're going to go down the road, Especially if they have buy food some for groceries. Sale. That's for sure. Uh, you know, there's an eatery nearby. They're going to get some service, I'd imagine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, well, I, I, you know, Marco used to tell me when he had vape on the lake. The guy in the, at the convenience store next door was happy because he made an extra ten grand a month. Just the fact that people, people, people going there and buying stuff. Yep, sure. Yeah. Uh, you know. the game. Yeah, so there you go. You know, there's a perfect example of how it can, you know, it brings people. You know, that was a vapor lounge. It, was, it wasn't a cannabis retail store, but cannabis bringing people to a location that had Any- some concern. And, Any uh, vibrant AG. business, yeah, it's gonna it's gonna affect the surrounding area. You, you know, you want to be around successful businesses. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just stigma associated with them, and we need to get past that, right? Yeah. That was, oh yeah. It's stig- and it's, we still have some ways to go, but to legalization that was the biggest hurdle, right? Yeah. It's even strange oh, yeah. you're seeing. Yeah. So you know, we're we've come a long way. Well, yeah, yeah, we have. There's, you know, there's still, you know, people, I know people were saying, well, what was there a report there the other day? There was 21 tickets a day that are written here in Ontario, and people were yep. upset because there's all these tickets written, being written. And um, it worked out there was like 1,100 of them were for um, something minor, like, you know, having possession where it wasn't, uh, let's say for, and, and I look at it as minor because being a patient, I'm used to carrying my cannabis with me. So now with the law, you know, you carry a cannabis in, in your car and it was accessible to the driver, the driver can be charged as if it was accessible if it was alcohol, right? And we never right. had that charge before. What we were getting in before <laughs> was people were being charged with possession. Hey, oh, recently my mom, who mm-hmm. amazingly started to use cannabis, CBD only, but you know, it's step by step. And, um, but it, it took her doctor, she's seen me and all these amazing everything and whatever, but it took her doctor to say, Hey, have you, uh, thought about cannabis? She's like, Oh, well, maybe I will. And I don't want to, it's my mom, right? Good for her. Yeah. I'm glad she's doing it. But, um, 
I took the doctor to bring, to mention it to her in order to, right. to open her eyes to it. Yeah. And yeah. I, that wasn't even the initial point I was going after there. I'm losing it, guys. I'm tired here. It's, it's yeah, I know, a long day, eh? Yo, you know, I haven't, I haven't even eaten yet. I just oh, finished, really? I didn't even finish work. I was still, I'm still, I have two guys waiting here right now to finish off this. I have another person waiting. As soon as we get off a call, they're going to work and doing other things. We're just waiting, we're smoking. And uh, hopefully this night will be done before 11. Oh, wow, eh? See, just uh, it, from sun up to, to, from wake up to going to bed nonstop. My phone, I'm answering my phone, doing my emails. And I'm on like bed rest doing this nonstop, get up, do whatever. It's crazy. It's, yeah, uh, yeah. And, and, but this is one of the things that's happened in the last while is it's really hard to find good employees. Like, yeah. so, like you got to trust them. So it's hard for me to meet them. There's so many things like my own illness gets in the way. Right. But right. then there's now where three years ago I have a stack of resumes. Right. Now yeah. it's, uh, it's, it's, they're still there, but it's not, maybe it's like, I need skilled employees, really skilled mm-hmm. workers and like, it's a complex job. It seems really easy, but you need people who can, you know, juggle a bit. Right. That's and, right. um, and, uh, it's, uh, it's unfortunate that, that like, I've been blessed. My team is great and there, but it's been, it's been tough. I just had a, a gentleman, uh, I made a post today, so I might as well go into it. I was like, you know what? I don't want to say anything. Never mind nothing there's 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 problems and one of the things i look forward to with some sort of regulation is is that like i can't wait i'll have a job fair like hey who wants to come work for just compassion guys and i look at your resumes and find the most qualified people with the biggest hearts and the biggest you know what i mean like really find the right people um i look forward for that like I, i i feel that with with you know with legalization with everything coming together there's going to be so much more people helped. It's just going to take a while to get there. And yeah. in the meantime, I'm going to keep killing myself to make a little difference along the way. Chip away as we can all do. Get the news out. Like, the reason why I want to do the news show is to get the news out. I want to spook a yeah. really wide cast. Let people understand. And then, and then let people know there's a constitutional challenge here. Like, they're not throwing it. We have to be the media. We have to get the word out. Like, we need the support of the people. And, and... And yeah, so let's do it. Now, talking about legalization and stuff, do you think that uh, this, because this coming uh, spring and summer, you know, when people are outside and gathering together, uh, do you think um, it's going to have uh, affect the rallies and stuff that happen? Like, you know, the Global Marijuana March and the 420 events, you know, events that you and I go to and Right. As a picture, you know, uh, interview people and talk to people about what they're doing and the event that they're attending. Um, but look at look at 420 last year. That was the beginning, I think, to show you things are different. I um, I was also in July. I was approached by an event mm-hmm. who was putting their event together for 420 to to be a part of it. So I'm like, holy smokes, this is a changing game. I've never heard of this before. I'm lucky if I. You know what I mean? Like it's kind of last minute, unorganized, <laughs> right? Do you and, think that? Go ahead. Yeah, this is like a new world. So what if uh, the, the, what I've seen the, this this new world doesn't properly incorporate the old world, and therefore I don't have quite the same interest, and I don't know if you'll see quite the same. Like, we need more. I want to see more of that. That you know, like the treating yourself and and those type of of uh, events. Than, than uh, you know, these spritzer events where we're having, like, drinks over drinks, cannabis yeah. pop, right? Yeah, we, yeah we, can't okay. con- we can't consume the cannabis, but you can have a drink. Silly. Silly. Just, I don't know. What are they going to do? You think next year those those places will allow them to serve cannabis beverages at their cannabis event, or they have to stick to alcohol? Let's hope so. Well, you know, it could have something to do with some rule, bylaw, or regulation not to prevent it. You just never know. Well, I, 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 <laughs> there are several beer and alcohol companies that are jumping into the ring. So, I mean, yeah, yeah, there is. Yep, yeah, there lots is. of them. There's more. Yeah, and it's just constant. I remember I did a video and I was like, "Ah, something that that uh, what is this? like we're we're." We're like the soldiers, and, and I'm, mm-hmm. a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm 
I'm a platoon or a sergeant in the hills here, and and we're like a medical division, and coast to coast, the lines are down, and I don't have communication to the to the west coast, and and I see the this is and this is going back over like a year ago, and I'm like I mean, I see the the troops advancing, and they've crossed over enemy lines. And then I saw, I remember Mark, Mark Emery deep past the main lines, like he was opening up the stores left and right. And then, and then I said, but in the distance, there's the aircraft carriers in the distance. And, and that's what it is. Big pharma, tobacco, um, tobacco, alcohol, these conglomerates, multinationals, they're, they're, they're going to really, uh, once I think, even we're seeing it now, but you're going to see even larger once, once things stabilize, um, mm-hmm. Just like a complete takeover, and you're just seeing like these national outreaches, and and companies are just going international, and global, global with their cannabis, and 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 it's just going to become very corporate, I imagine. Oh yeah, well look at the places now, left and right, they're coming up with either legalization or the legalization of medical cannabis from Thailand. Mm-hmm. Uh, Germany's now looking for their own well, producers. Greece. Greece is, Greece is manufacturing thousands and thousands of kilos of CBD. What? Like they were chosen through EU to, EU to, to, to and, then, and that's CBD oil getting manufactured in Greece to help the, <clears throat> the, the, they're having some employment issues there. We'll leave it at that. But um, they're, they're, you know, these initiatives, global, it's incredible, medicinal, recreational, Cannabis is going to change the world. It is. It's happening. It is. Yeah. It is. It started out with a few few countries, and now more and more countries are, are you know throwing treaties to the wind and ignoring those uh, treaties. Uh, some of those East Asian countries had laws that carried the death penalty, and now patients are going to be able to have access to right. But uh, it's, yeah. a, it's a double edged sword because what's being sold is a corporate model yeah, of control the drug. So it's a yeah. double-edged sword, right? We have to always remember that this is also, at the same time, a corporate takeover of an innocent plant. Like, whoa. And, 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 and that's the dichotomy of, of, of cannabis in 2019, folks. Yes, it's, it is a changing world. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, no we got to look at 2021 and beyond. This is it. We got to get up, activate, uh, yeah. get involved. We have these well, that's why I sort of wondered about. That's why I uh, wondered about the the rallies. You know, people might say, "Well, okay, cannabis is legalized now. You know, no use going." That's what the you know sort of the protest was all about. But there's still changes that need to be made, and people should still. I look at it, still attend those things in order to try to get changes to be made. Let's rewrite the whole damn thing. Yeah. <laughs> well, <Hey>. yeah. <laughs> there are there there are, I'm there are some, I'm some things that need to be changed. There's no doubt yeah. about that. Yeah. Okay, Justin. Al, have you got any questions for Justin before we wrap things up? No, I'm tired too. You're tired <laughs> too. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, yes, yes, I know what you mean. It's always an early morning. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, okay. Well, Justin, you got a shout out for us. <coughs> Um, I want to shout out, actually, everyone at Just Compassion, every member of Just Compassion, everyone who supports Just Compassion, it's been crazy, it's been so crazy, and I love everyone, like I really do, it's a special place, and I have a special place in my heart for everyone that comes there, and yeah, so shout out to everyone at Just Compassion. Good, 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 and Cannabis Week, uh, Newsweek dot com, right? Check it out. Check it All out. Right. All right. And okay, stay good. Informed. Like, we're going to help. I'm just trying to pitch in with the information of it all and uh, have an unbiased support from the underground, from, from the, the gray, from, from, the, from the people. From the people. That's right. That's right. Another opinion in there. Get it out. All right. Uh, Al, did you want to say anything? Nah. nah. I say <laughs> enough. You say <laughs> enough. <laughs> All right, I will be back next week. Uh, Kim will be joining me. I saw on her uh, on her Facebook post that she's looking at getting out of the hospital uh, in the next twenty four to forty eight hours. Okay, depends on how the food goes. So I'm suspecting she'll be uh, she'll be good to go next week. 
See what happens. We'll see, see what happens. Feel better, Kim. Yes, feel better, Kim. I imagine she's still listening. I haven't got Facebook open right now. So, all right. Uh, let's see what else. So you can find Pace on Twitter at Pace Radio. We're also on Facebook as well as Instagram. Uh, thank you, as always, go out to our sponsors, uh, the friendly and helpful folks at Legacy 420. Have you ever been there, Justin? Justin? At Legacy? Legacy no, 420? I've, I've seen it. I, I want to go. Like, we've been talking about going out. And I've been trying to, like, all kinds of, I've, I want to go. I haven't been. But it looks What amazing. do you think, Al? Al, there's a, mic- there's a micro grower right there for sure, right? Eh? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Oh yeah, uh, uh, both both Al and I have walked through uh, the whole facility, uh, and uh, uh, wow! <laughs> yeah, yeah, like two two lab. They have two lab techs in there, as well as a researcher that oversees everything. Uh, yeah, like Doctor 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 Hornby is out there. Doctor Hornby, that's right, exactly. Wow, that's yeah, incredible! I didn't even know that. Wow. Yeah, Doctor Paul Hornby. Great. You had he's, Al, he's, didn't you have him on the show last week? A uh, couple of weeks ago. Couple of weeks uh, ago, and, and uh, no, last week it was last week. Yeah, with it was with last week. Yeah. All right, and, yeah, and uh, he's out there doing research on uh, all kinds of different things, cannabis related, uh, and and. Uh, Tim's made give him given him a lab and everything, so he's got everything and Incredible. anything. And they were up in yeah. Sud they were up in Sudbury at an event last week. Yeah, oh, yes, yes, that's right. I saw the picture of Tim uh, airport shot of nothing but snow. Man, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but they're they're doing processing. They've got beverages. Yep. Yeah, yeah, everything going mm. on there. Uh, security, big security, you know, with the big yeah. fencing and all that. <laughs> It seems like a great facility, great operation, really professional. Like, yeah, so. uh, actually, uh, Tim posted uh, Loyalist College just had students going through there yeah, that's uh, for educational amazing. tour. Yeah, that's that's really cool. I, I you know, and I don't th- I don't think it's the first time they've been out there. I think they've been out there no. a few times. Yeah. I've seen it posted twice. Yeah, uh, about them having these uh, tours. So uh, that's that's. Uh, let's just reiterate that is. A college in Ontario that have allowed students to come into a facility on on uh, Tangdenega, which is a reservation, uh, First yeah. First Nations, uh, and uh, out by Belleville, and and it, I mean it's it's a big step. There are colleges offering cannabis courses, and and I believe that that's one of them, and they allow the students to actually go in and and. Blah 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 blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Exactly. Yeah, it is. It is. It's just, it shows how things are evolving and changing all the time. So we Beautiful. appreciate them being. Uh, we uh, I call them Canada's largest First Nation cannabis dispensary. What do you think, Al? Uh, oh, oh, for, uh, without a doubt. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Tim, doubt, exactly. Tim's a, a leader in 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 what he is doing out there, and he's he's. Helping his community, and he's he's uh, you know doing yeah. he's doing what a lot of people wish they could do off the mm-hmm. reservation, and yeah. it, it might even help with other things because he's doing it to what the specs that Health Canada wants an LP to do right. it as. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, you know the cars swiping, the yeah, cars swiping, all that type of stuff for this. For everything, it's it's it's, yeah, it's good, uh, and it's been beneficial to the community. A lot of people who work there. Uh, there was an article in the Toronto Star, uh, something around about a three and a half million dollar a year payroll. Incredible, wow. it is, it is. So that that's money that's going back into the community, benefit mm-hmm. benefiting the community. So huge plus, huge it's good that they plus. Can see it, but. Why that that should be you know amplified and and then repeated replicated yeah. right yeah yeah exactly it's been and, that's, a model. and that's I, and that's one of the things he's trying to do he's also talking to other First Nations and and uh, oh yeah and and trying to help other reservations build their community as well uh, and mm-hmm. businesses um, at which some are saying no. 
but I mean, he's he's got Nimka as well, which I can't remember yeah, what right. that stands for. Uh, so he he's uh, he's on the political side of things as well, you know. And and he's a patient, Gordon. you know. I mean, he is a, a truly medical, you know. Yeah, 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 exactly. You know, it's uh, it's been good. I'm just trying to uh, find something. Hey guys, that you just mentioned. I, yeah, I, go I, I got to We got to wrap this up. I'm in. You got to wrap her up. Okay. Yeah. All right. We'll shut her down. All right. Okay. Uh, other than that, uh, thanks for coming on the show and and helping out Al as well as Justin for participating. And other than that, I just want to thank the listeners for tuning in. Thank you and good night. Great, y'all. Peace. Legacy 420 has medicinal and recreational products down to a science, literally. With two biochemists on staff and a chief scientific advisor, every product is tested in the Legacy 420 laboratory. Legacy 420, Ty and Denega. Open 9 to 9 every day. Visit Legacy420.com. What are you doing? Nothing. Nothing? Why not? Trying to get on the Slice Style Radio website. Sounds like a cool website. Yeah, it's all right. Oh, yeah, I might have it. You're listening to Lifestyle Radio. The opinions expressed during this show are those of the individual participants and do not necessarily reflect the opinions of their associated organizations or Lifestyle Radio.